What is this thing? This is a scientific review article that I wrote with help. Normally when we talk about papers and publications in science, we're talking about publishing articles about our own research. So we've done an experiment, we've written it up, and we've published it somewhere so that other people can read about it. But there are also these other things called review articles, and that's where somebody takes a look at a topic or a field, and rather than publishing about their own research, they sort of do a survey of the landscape, and they publish a review of what's happening in that field or in that topic. And these are really useful to me as a scientist when I'm trying to get into something new. So I find review articles really helpful and useful to my sort of scientific learning and journey, but I didn't ever think that I would write one because to me, the people who write review articles are experts in that field and they have spent years thinking about this thing so they know where all the important parts are and they can synthesize all of those for you. And I didn't feel like an expert in my field, but last year, actually April of 2017, I believe, my advisor asked if I wanted to write a review with him. So the journal asked that we write a review on cardiovascular precision medicine. And that's a huge topic, and I didn't know where to start. So I spent a lot of time thinking about what is precision medicine, and because I spent a lot of time writing that down, uh, I'm just gonna read to you what I settled on as the first sentence, the first sentence of the abstract of our paper. Precision medicine strives to delineate disease using multiple data sources, from genomics to digital health metrics, in order to be more precise and accurate in our diagnoses, definitions, and treatments of disease subtypes. By defining disease at a deeper level, we can treat patients based on an understanding of the molecular underpinnings of their presentations rather than grouping patients into broad categories with one-size-fits-all treatments. So the idea really is that rather than just looking at a patient and saying, okay, you have X thing, we're gonna treat you with Y, we're instead now using all of the sort of increased data available to us today from things about genomes to the proteins our body are creating to RNA to phenotypes, our physical presentations to information from Fitbits that many people are wearing. We're taking all of these different sources of data that we have about patients now and trying to really narrow in on not just, oh, you have disease X, but oh, you have this specific type of disease X caused by Y, and so we're gonna give you Z treatment. So I was thinking about precision medicine and I was thinking about cardiovascular disease and I was trying to think about how to bring these two things together into this review and it's such a large topic because we're starting to use all of these techniques in cardiovascular disease and how was I supposed to sum all of that up into 7,000 words? Like, it's a lot to do. I started by just sort of writing down case studies of instances of cardiovascular precision medicine that I knew of and I met with my advisor and I was like, I don't know, I wrote a bunch of stuff but I don't know how to organize it and I don't know how to put it together. And so he helped me sort of think of a framework of how I could take the stuff that I had written and the ideas I'd been thinking about and sort of synthesize them into a paper that had a flow and that made some sense. So that broad backbone that we came up with is one where I start off by talking about precision medicine in other areas. So places like oncology and cystic fibrosis, where they've really been doing precision medicine and this kind of research for a long time. And so talking about lessons that they have learned and ways that we can integrate that into cardiovascular research. I then talk a bit about what, what we're already doing in cardiovascular research, both in the lab and in the clinic, uh, thinking about genetics and precision medicine, and I use some case studies of both rare and common diseases to illustrate some of these things. I then really broadly again talk about sort of new genetic technologies that are coming in. So things like CRISPR and how we can integrate that into again research and the clinic in cardiovascular medicine. And then I end off talking about some things we're going to have to do a little bit better in the future and sort of issues we're going to have to tackle in the future. And then I wrote it and it took a while and I wrote a draft and I sent it to my professor and he had edits so he edited it and then he sent it back to me and then I made edits and then I sent it back to him. One of the things that was really hard for me uh, in writing this that was an interesting fun challenge to tackle was that the audience for this journal is doctors 
And so I am a geneticist writing about genetics, talking to doctors. And so I was having the issue where I'm really comfortable with the genetics language, but not a lot of the medical language. So I was over explaining the medical terms and under explaining the genetics terms. So that was kind of an interesting, fun task in thinking about audience and who was going to be reading this. Uh, but so we went through all these rounds of edits. And then finally, we had a draft and I submitted it to the journal. They took it and they sent it out to some other experts in the field. And those are blinded, so I don't know who those people were. But about four weeks later, I'd say about a month later, they then wrote back comments on the draft. And I actually found their comments to be really helpful. They were very kind, and so they gave good suggestions. So that was actually a really exciting day, though, because we got the paper back that said uh, accepted with revisions, which means that if we made these changes and we started discussing all these other things, it would get to be published. And I did a little happy dance around my kitchen because that was really exciting. So then I did that. I went on another writing spree, and it took me a little longer than I anticipated. I'm just real deep into this now, and I think I've looked at it so many times that I'm like a little bleary-eyed as to where different things are. Uh, and I will say that I appreciate this iterative process so much because I think that having it go through all these rounds of revisions and having so many different people's input on it is going to make it the best review possible. But at this point, I think I'm also a little nervous that this might be the last round, and so these are the words that are going to be published, and that's a little intimidating but I just, I need to power through this. I need to get this done. And finally, we came to a draft that had incorporated all of my original thoughts and my advisor's thoughts and the thoughts of these outside reviewers and the editor at the journal and synthesized them all into one paper and I sent it back. So that was December 31st of 2017. That was one of my final things that I did on, uh, of 2017 is I sent back this entire draft and then two days later, on January 2nd, they accepted it. So that was super exciting because, sure, it's not my own original research, but it is the first piece of published scientific literature that has my name as first author on it. And then after that, they sent us proofs, which was such a cool moment to actually see it in a form printed that looked a little bit like this. We got proofs of the review. These came in a couple days ago, and as soon as I saw the email, I like shrieked and the whole lab came over and we were looking at them because it was so exciting. This is the first time that there's something published with my name as first author. It looks so real and professional, and I'm going through today and I'm looking at typos, but like this, this is a real thing. It's something about it being formatted and like our illustrations are in here. It's so real and also when I got through it I was just so excited because up at the top too it says like Dana and Ashley and like that's me that's me on there I also realized while doing this that like it's really long we went over the word count but like how did I write so much how did I write so much this is like a fraction of what my thesis is about to be and so I went through the proofs and I made little edits here and there and I sent those back and then it was in and we'd sent back the proofs and it had been accepted and I had no idea when it was coming out, but I just waited until April 30th when I went to the website and my name was on the front page. That means that you can go read this article that I wrote entitled Cardiovascular Precision Medicine in the Genomics Era. And I hope that maybe you will want to read it because one of the cool things about this is that it is an open access publication. So many scientific publications are behind paywalls. Considering that I am all about disseminating science to the public, I feel pretty strongly about things being open access, which means there is no paywall you can go and read this and the reasons why some articles are open access and some aren't is like a big discussion about science publishing for another video but i'm really really excited that the first thing with my name on it is open access and that i can put a link in the description and you can go and read it and I will say that this was written for a medical audience, so it's a little medical jargony, but I, 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 think, I think you can do it. I trust you. I think that if this is something you're interested in learning more about, if you're interested in learning about how we are using genetics specifically for precision medicine, for being better at diagnosing and treating disease in cardiovascular disease today, 
I think you might be interested. I'm really selling my paper well here. But even if you don't read it, I hope that this was sort of an interesting babble about what a scientific review article is and what the process of writing one is like and who or what it might be useful for, right? The whole idea here is that a doctor who doesn't know much about precision medicine and wants to learn more can say, hey, I'm a cardiologist. I want to learn about how precision medicine could be useful to me and my patients. I wonder if there's an article out there about that. And then hopefully they would find this article and I could be like, hey, let me tell you about how precision medicine can help you and your patients in the cardiovascular world. So hey, I'm clearly a little rusty at this. Uh, I've been gone for a while focusing on school and I'm still gonna be focusing on school a lot. Uh, I'm hoping to graduate with my PhD at the end of this summer, early fall. So things are a little bit busy around here, but I am going to start trying to put out more videos again. So a huge thank you to every member of this community here and on Twitter and on YouTube and on Patreon who has continued to support me uh, and interact with me on all of those platforms throughout this content drought. It means so, so much that you guys have stuck around and are still supporting me, either like really supporting me on Patreon monetarily and helping me to physically make these things uh, or just emotionally supporting me here and everywhere with like comments and just sticking around and being part of this community. I appreciate it so much through this end of PhD. There's gonna be more content coming. I'm trying to keep you guys in it here with me. And so thank you so, so much for just sticking around. I promise every video isn't gonna have one of these like babbly emotional bits, but I appreciate it and I want you to know that and there hasn't been a video in forever. So I hope we're cool. Go forth and review science.